Welcome back. Uh, today, we have, right now, we have uh, Gautam, co-founder and CEO of Pokedex. And Pokedex is uh, using the advantages of building on Substrate and Polkadot to build a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer exchange with high throughput. So welcome, Gautam. Take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Gautam. I'm CEO and co-founder of Polkadex. First of all, thanks to the entire Polkadot Decoder team for organizing this event. And today, I will be talking about what Polkadex is all about and what we bring to the Polkadot ecosystem. So in a nutshell, Polkadex is a fully decentralized exchange that also offers the benefits of centralized exchange to users, thanks to our unique architecture of the product. In Polkadex, what we think is, you know, the DeFi is a way for the financial freedom for millions of people around the world. So DeFi has to attract masses to grow. However, the current decentralized sections still have a lot of flows and also difficult. it's difficult for a non-crypto native person. And this is the main reason why centralized exchanges you know, lay, are, are growing in number and also most of the users are flocking towards centralized exchanges. It's because of the speed, user experience and the advanced trading features and all the fearless transactions that centralized exchanges provide. So the main idea behind Polkadex was to merge the benefits on benefits of centralized exchanges and also the security of decentralized exchanges into one product that is suitable for all the crypto users, all levels of crypto users. Yeah, so the main feature of Polkadex is all about you know, Polkadex order book. So Polkadex offers a trading experience that is simple and efficient as a centralized exchange, but as secure as a decentralized exchange. The funds are always with the users. Which means that you know if somebody loses their seed uh, seed phrase or a private key, then you know we the Polkadot team or anyone cannot do anything. So the, the complete user fund is controlled by the users themselves, and this this is possible. This is facilitated by the TE technology and the decentralized fund recovery mechanism that we invented. We have more details about it in the last slide. And Polkadot offers the speed the, and the advanced features like high frequency trading and traders can use all their favorite trading bots to trade in Polkadex, especially Hummingbot and all the other open source uh, trading bots. Polkadex also uh, allows users to connect their cold wallet to use fund for, from the cold wallet to trade in the Polkadex exchange without bringing the cold wallet online. So that means users can trade from their mobile phone or desktop that is connected to the internet. At the same time, the fund will be trading from the cold wallet. So this is something that no other DEX has ever done before, and this is possible in Polkadex. And similar to the experience on centralized exchanges, Polkadex also offers the offers the opportunity to trade from desktop, mobile app, and also the Polkadot JS browser extension. So this this means that you know uh, Polkadex users get a really great UI, uh, and the experience and and the onboarding experience will be really really beautiful and easy. And we have we implement you know uh, K decentralized KYC. This is mainly to bring large institutional traders. Which means that uh, we are not limited to the liquidity from the crypto ecosystem. You now the large institutional market makers and other uh, institutional traders can come and provide liquidity to the Polkadex users. And but at the same time, we have to keep the true spirit of DeFi. So this is the reason why we partner with Fractal and Kill Protocol, which you you already must be knowing about, and we provide decentralized KYC for them. So this means the users keep the in their KYC information in their wallet. And also, thanks to the IPFS and all the off-chain worker technology that Substrate provides, on top of that, the withdrawal mechanism that we invented, we are able to provide a decentralized fund recovery mechanism if something happens to the off-chain order book that we are holding. So this means, unlike other decentralized exchanges where order book is off-chain, if the operator is, uh, is, is compromised, the funds of user is still secure because the on-chain governance can take over and PDEX holders can secure the fund. And and finally, you know, it's it's impossible to imagine attracting crypto newbies without offering them purchasing crypto directly from fiat. So we also provide fiat support thanks to the decentralized KYC. And as you can see, this this is all possible, you know, due to the T technology that we are using, and also we are able to scale scale up to like 500k transactions per second. And th this is something that similar to any other centralized exchange. And all this is happening without compromising the security. And this is how the Polkadex will be looking like when we come out, uh, when we come out, when we release. And we will be releasing a testnet shortly, which we will announce uh, most probably in two weeks' time. 
And also, I take this opportunity to announce a new feature that we are working on, Polka Pool. And it will be coming after the mainnet launch. And Polka Pool allows anyone to create their own bonding curves like UNICEF. And what we believe is that if somebody claims that their bonding curve is the best one out there, it is not true. So we believe that a lot of different bonding curves will be there, which will have their own different properties. And the community should be the one to decide which one is the best. So we allow the PDX takers and using the on-chain governance, they can choose which bonding curve that they like, the community likes to be made peerless on Polkadex. So this means that there is no gas fees, there is no front running, and everything works directly on the Polkadex network. There are a few more features that we are announcing today, mainly public liquidity mining. This allows passive traders to provide liquidity for market making in Polkadex and also earn rewards. Polka Pool will also allow institutional trading that will bring more users and liquidity to Polkadex. And also using the decentralized T technology, which, is, which allows Polkadex to connect to other blockchain that is not uh, substrate based. And uh, for example, Cosmos, IOTA, Cardano using decentralized T uh, validators. And this is a feature that we'll be implementing after six months once the mainnet and the order book is stable. And we will also support all the other teams working on creating bridges and other bonding curves and other trading infrastructure on the Polkadex ecosystem. And this is all done through the on-chain governance and on-chain treasury. So to sum up, Polkadex will offer its users a mix of the best features of centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges, such as you know, high level security of funds. There is no custody of user funds, the great user experience on multiple devices, advanced features like high frequency trading, trading bots, and safe and efficient decentralized KYC, and on top of that, fiat support for crypto purchases. In the next slide, you can find an in-depth diagram about how we provide this technology and how this technology works. And if you are much more geeky and know more about it, our team will be sharing the link in the group. You can look, check it out. And also as a sneak peek, our testnet is coming in three weeks from Friday. And we will be launching our testnet and all the features will be tested out in the testnet and it will contain the public uh, interaction also so that public can come and see which all features are uh, there and how it works. It is good, it is not good. They can provide feedback and will iterate. And once iterated, we will move on to the mainnet launch in late August if everything goes well. And this is this was Polkadex in a nutshell. You can connect us through the official Polkadex social media channels to learn more about the team and also the product. And thank you for your attention. Speak soon. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam. Uh, we already have a question uh, from the chat. Um, so uh, it's mo mostly about the feeless architecture here. Uh, what was it a concern about having feeless architecture uh, concerning some bad actors being able to um, attack it in some way or manipulate anything? Yeah, so uh, the, the main question will be like, what about you know spamming the network um, if, if we provide feeless transactions? So that's where we have uh, putting in you know like Substrate provides us a technology where uh, the transactions can be checked before it reaches the runtime uh, in the single node itself. So using that, we are able to check the on-chain governance can check whether they are spamming the network or not. You know there are a lot of transactions. It, it keeps a, a, a set of analytics that will keep track whether it's just trying to uh, spam or not. And also the Act, you, know, you know, technically speaking, the fee is deducted, but if the user is found that he's genuinely executing a swap and not trying to spam the network, then the fee will be refunded back. So it's like, uh, it's more like how Polkadot Polka governance works, where, you know, the first time the users vote, it is free, but for the next time they want to change their vote or, you know, do something else, then they have to pay the transaction fees. So this is one of the PR that was there in the Polkadot uh, governance palettes. So we are always, we, the idea was inspired from them. Now we just put it on top of a governance layer, which, which means that the community can decide which bonding curve. And there will be only one bonding curve that will be fearless and rest will be uh, having transaction fees. And the community can decide which bonding curve to be free and it should be, it will be made a fearless. And also the community can define the parameters which we will be showcasing in our test network. Uh, makes sense. Uh, really interesting method there. Um, another thing is you talked about, we have a question on the, the fiat on ramps. How will this um, be done? Like say for the everyday user who's used to centralized exchanges, they know that centralized exchanges have plenty of options for fiat on ramps. How do, how do fiat on ramps work for a decentralized exchange? 
Yeah, so fiat is something that we cannot decentralize because uh, there are a lot of parts here. And we are trying to create a unique architecture where there's a decentralized fiat, a peer-to-peer -peer fiat on-ramp mechanism, and also a centralized uh, fiat mechanism. For example, if the user is comfortable in trusting the Polkadex off-chain operator, then they can use the centralized uh, fiat on-ramp system that we have. But if not, there is a peer-to-peer -peer mechanism using the off-chain workers to do the, um, you know, uh, the fiat on-ramp where the user will send the funds, lock the funds on chain. And once the fiat is confirmed, there will be an arbitrator uh, who will be who will be incentivized to conduct the fiat trade for both the users. And just like uh, the peer-to-peer -peer trading in any other centralized exchange, the users, two users can actually, uh, one can send the fiat to other and other can send the token to the next one. And this way we can uh, solve the issue of fiat on ramp. Okay, makes sense. Um, another question is about the, the KYC, uh, I saw that you're partnering with teams like Kilt around that. Is the KYC uh, sort of mandatory thing for every uh, user or is it something that the user can opt out on? Yeah, that's a really good question because KYC is only required for Polkadex order book users who are trading more than $5,000. So it's just like any other centralized exchange. If you're trading, you know, if they're trading a very small amount, then you don't need KYC. You don't need to do any KYC other than the email verification. But uh, if you are using Polkadex network in general, just for the staking validation, the swap pool, Polka pool, you don't need to do any sort of KYC. It's just like any other, uh, you know, decentralized network. Why we did Polkadex, uh, you know, the in Polkadex order book, the KYC is because we want to bring institutional traders because that's where we can provide the speed, um, you know, this minimum spread that users want in order book. Unlike other decentralized order book where, you know, the spread is too much and it is completely unusable for a, a retail trader or a, or a general uh, crypto trader. So that's the reason why we provide a decentralized KYC. And it's an option. If people don't like it, they don't want to use it. And they can always use the uh, Polkadex Polka pool, uh, which we have on the main net, which doesn't have any KYC. So we give the option to the end user. Cool. <laughs> really cool. Uh, good to hear for a lot of the users out there concerned about that. Um, one, one more question I have is about the ability of, or the perhaps the format of the on-chain governance. Has there been discussions around how that's going to be developed? Yeah, so um, initially the on-chain governance will be the team itself because we want to see whether the Polkadex network is stable and the off-chain technology is properly interacting with it. And slowly after that, we will be providing uh, you know, grants and airdrops to the community, which will increase the decentralization of token. And once it is sufficiently decentralized, we will completely move away from, you know, the control of the team and it becomes completely owned by the network. So it's a gradual process, which will take maybe like one year to become sufficiently decentralized enough. And that's how we believe uh, we reach a, a truly decentralized governance. Cool. One more question uh, around the fund recovery aspect. So it's really great to see that, you know, obviously decentralized exchanges, a big factor of that is having your own keys, your keys, your coins. Um, how are you going to have some ways where if users lose their keys, they could perhaps get their funds back? Yeah. So if the user lose the key, then the best shot they have is to go to the Polkadex governance. And if the community approves and if they feel that it is good, then they can recover the funds using the Polkadex governance. Polkadex governance. And um, the, the decentralized uh, withdrawal mechanism is mainly for, you know, since we have an off-chain order book, uh, everyone will raise the question that, you know, what if the operator is fraud or he's getting compromised or he, what if he's hacked? So in such a scenario, the decentralized withdrawal mechanism that user utilizes IPFS and the off-chain workers and also the on-chain governance can make sure it can recover the user funds and the user will get the fund within the next 12 seconds. That's the two block time. And they can re re recover the funds in the exact token and also in the exact amount to the decimal places. So this is the best kind of, you know, the insurance mechanism that any kind of uh, centralized exchanges can provide or a decentralized exchange or a, even a crypto exchange can provide because it happens in 12 seconds. It is completely decentralized because the operator of the off-chain order book is not involved. It doesn't matter whether it is online or offline, and uh, this all brings together the on-chain. If the community, on-chain community, believes it, okay, this needs to be done. They can choose it, and they can use Polkadex token 
to vote for it and they get the tokens back and everyone is happy and the operator is completely like uh, they cannot do anything they literally left with just the technology there's nothing and anyone else since the code is open source any other person in the community can take up the uh, code and run their own off chain order book and continue the network forward so that's why we call pull correct even though we have an off chain um, part in the network it be, since it can be replicated by anyone not only by us it becomes decentralized and one more question we have related to that is are you considering oh, sure. social recovery uh while well, it's uh and related to that as you know uh substrate has a social recovery feature that uh chains can use to build in are you considering this for your chain yeah we are looking at different features because uh, we are since uh, social recovery is not designed for an off chain order book use case so we need to look at it you know we are we will be te testing all these features in our test network whether we need to go with the social recovery feature or we have to create a customized version or a modified form of the social recovery but in in a nutshell it works similar in a similar manner or the only details that will be changing the low level technical details where how it will be interacting with the ipfs or the opt-in worker only that will be changing but uh, from a high level view it would just it worked just like a, the social recovery feature Thank you so much. That's all the time we have, Gautam. Thanks so much for your talk and answering all the questions. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye.